I had the privilege of serving from Lincoln's birthday 2001 to late May 2005 in the George W. Bush White House as the Senior Director for Intelligence. What I learned about the Oval Office, if any of you have been in it or had the privilege of doing a tour of it in whatever form, you might have noticed there's two doors into the two <coughs> primary doors into the Oval Office. This will come as an intelligence surprise to you, a front door and a back door. <laughs> sort of reminds you of something in your house. The people that come through the front door I started to observe come in generally as the, uh, the, the leadership of other countries, our political leadership in our own country, when they're visitors. And over time, I concluded that when I gave the intelligence briefing to George W. Bush and Vice President Cheney and the assembled national security individuals, which happened on a daily basis, was that the people who came in the front door saw the world as they wish it were, they wish it would be. The people that came in the back door, like myself, generally, as a rule, told the audience in that room as the world really is. And as I think ahead of what the president-elect will face, along with his cabinets, the, the cabinet members of people I know well, like General Mattis and General Kelly, because of my time at the Defense Intelligence Agency, great men, by the way, great people. Uh, I call them warrior scholars. They will do great things for our nation. When I think of others who are part of that national security cabinet as it comes together like Mike Pompeo. I'm convinced that they will have the courage to come through that back door and say, Mr. President, you may wish the world to be this way. Your constituency may want the world to be this way, but with all due respect, the world is this as opposed to that. That's an uncomfortable position to be in. But that's the kind of courage that's required in talking to the individuals when you present them with options, informed by intelligence. Intelligence doesn't make the decision. Good intelligence is only helpful to the degree that it speaks the truth in bringing options to the decision maker. So it will not surprise you if I stand here before you and make a strong case for strong defense and then ultimately the first line of defense, a very strong intelligence capability for our nation. And oh, how I would love that to be apolitical. That's not a political statement. Our first line of defense that either prevents the war that we do not wish to send our young sons and daughters to, or the intelligence that decisively wins the war, should that be the only option. That's what intelligence is for.